Stoney. The Morning Drive. This is a new world we're in. With Mike Bagley and Pete Pistone. Not a bad show, but I don't like the format of it. back on the morning drive soon we're heading back to you I'm gonna check the calendar got slugger Labby on the way first we return the hot lot to the hotline that is and we bring in the crew chief for dale earnhardt jr in the nascar spring cup series steve latart's here top of the morning to you stevie good morning gentlemen what's going on hey man we are uh, happy to be here and i know you got a busy week ahead of you heading down to daytona for testing but before we get into that who wins tonight notre dame alabama where are you going with this one? Oh man I good. hoped Notre Dame, I think Alabama. How about really? that? Um, my, my heart says I'd rather see a different division win a little bit, and I'd like to see Notre Dame. It's been a long time. i got some Notre Dame fans here in the, here in the, the shop, but, uh, man, my, uh, my heart and my brain don't agree. I think Alabama's going to beat up on them a little bit. I think it's going to be a battle royale tonight in South Florida. It's going to be a good game. It is, it is. It's uh, it's quite a good, it's kind of like, you know, the pros don't have a Monday night game, so this is a nice little touch for playoff weekend. Yeah, it is. Agreed, agreed. Uh, All right, well, you've got a lot on your plate going down to Daytona this week, Steve. Uh, What are you hoping to learn this weekend? What are you looking for at the World Center of Racing for a few days down there with this new cup car? Well, you know, Pete, it's, it's, it's interesting because this is going to be different than normal Daytona testing. Normal Daytona testing here, at least for the last few years, the rules have been a little more consistent with the bodies and things haven't changed as much. So we've really been able to fine-tune where this year, man, it's a really open book. And uh, I think we need to go down. We're going to spend a day or so running by ourselves the first day and just work on some platform and attitude and, and some, you know, with the new body, the air box shape has had to change. A lot of things have had to change that we, we've been able to leave consistent for years, been able to just check off the list. So we have a pretty big laundry list of, of items that won't impress the fan watching us test. You know, it's going to be a lot of um, unexciting single car runs for a day or a day and a half. But, you know, hopefully we can get that stuff knocked out. The weather will stick with us and we'll be able to get drafting maybe the afternoon of day two. And that's when we'll really learn how these cars drive down there at Daytona. You know, it'll be interesting to see how much the how much grip the pavement has lost over time. Now, you say that you're going to focus on single car runs the first day. On paper, on the schedule that NASCAR puts out, they're allowing drafting practice from from the drop of the green on day one to you know we drop the black and reds on the end of day three. Why are they allowing the drafting practice? Because it used to be afternoon only. Why are they allowing it the entire time that that you're there? Well, I think that. You know, drafting, as silly as this seems, but it used to take a really, really big pack. You used to have to have 16, 18, 20 cars to really learn much in the draft. And here lately with the two-car tandem and the cooling, um, your test list would require less cars to to get what you want accomplished. So with that requirement of less cars, NASCAR, I think, has, you know, kind of waved the schedule open and said, hey, you know, if the 400 cars want to go down there and run nose to tail and work on something, then so be it. We'll let them. We're not going to try to hold their hand and and set the schedule that way. And I think it makes for a more productive test. It breaks the group up a little bit. You know, when everyone does single car runs, the line gets very long on pit road. You can only have four cars really on the track at a time. A fifth kind of messes up the air for everyone. So... You know, you're talking a run every hour and five minutes. And that, that makes for a pretty slow-moving test where if you allow some cars to draft, if I'm working on temperature items, I don't need a clean racetrack. I can just bypass the line, go out there, and run with someone. So, you know, really, I, I, I'm a big fan of it. I think I'll get a lot more done in three days now that the testing is open. You talk about the tandem draft. What is it? What What is the attitude and placement of the bumpers on these race cars? Will it be easier, more difficult to for one car to push another, especially at Daytona and Talladega? Well, you know, the, the interesting thing, like, is that they, the manufacturers are so different now that that really is a big question mark. You know, before, while there was some, you know, shape differences in the noses, the, the, the overall plane and kind of shape of the front bumper looked the same. Well, now with the three makes, they're grill inlets, while they are um, – Police by NASCAR at the speedways to be in the same location. The the bumpers are designed for the grills to kind of be in different places, so there's a lot more shapes and edges and corners. Um, the rear bumpers have a lot more shapes. So, man, I think that is really the big unknown. Is is I think we are back to you know Ford versus Chevy versus versus Toyota as far as who pushes better with whom, what bumpers line up better. 
it's not going to be 43 of the same cars riding around. There's going to be a lot of flavor between OEMs, and I think that's great. You know, growing up in the sport, you know, I love to see the guys that, well, my dad's a Chevy guy, you know, and he cheered for the Chevys. He almost didn't care who was driving it. He wanted a Chevy to win. And I think the identity we have in the cars now, we're going to see a whole lot more manufacturer-based cheering, and I think that's going to make for really fun speed weeks. Well, and it's great that people can connect to it. I remember when you guys tested at Charlotte, you said that your son was able to identify. He's nine years old, right? He knew the difference between the race cars. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what the sport's all about, you know, is um, – it, it, it's you know everyone can pick up a baseball and hit it with a bat. Everybody can throw a football in the backyard. And I think what brought NASCAR into the mainstream, what brought NASCAR into the living room of fans all across the country, what brought it into my living room when I was growing up was that was that you know people cheer for their manufacturers. That you could see that car driving on the street, you could see it parked in the parking lot. And I think this, we've we've gained that back again. And I think that's something that none of us knew how important it was. Maybe it's the same old adage. Maybe you don't know how something important has gone how important something was until it was gone. And I think we lost that a little bit. And I think now that that's back, that's going to really set a tone for the whole for the whole season, really. And I think the Manufacturers Championship will be more interesting to follow. It's going to be uh, – I can't wait. I'm ready to get on the racetrack. The, the winter's been fun, but the decorations are put up. Well, almost all of them. I have one more decoration to put up, and then my wife will be extremely pleased with me. But the decorations <laughs> are almost all put up, and then it's time to go get on the racetrack. All right, help, help me write the epitaph for the car of tomorrow, the car that we use in the Sprint Cup Series from 2007 to 2012, Steve. What do you remember about that car? What's the legacy of that race car for you? Well, I think the legacy of that race car is it's the first car I've ever seen that we finally, as a consistent basis, put safety first. I think we did that in the same time era with the racetracks and the car. I think because of that, we saw uh, half a decade of extremely race or extremely safe racing. Um, I think we have some amazing finishes if we go back and watch some of the races. And I think it was, um, you know, it was a big shift in our sport. The cars have a completely different appearance. They have a, a completely different approach. And I think that, um, you know, it was a learning thing. And I, I, it was difficult for all of us. It was a lot of work. It was a trying time. And it will be interesting to see how we evolve with the next car because it appears, and maybe I'm a little – a little jaded, but if you take that time frame, there was a few companies that were very, very, very successful with that car, and we'll see if those companies can continue their success with a new shaped vehicle. I, we I, saw I, drivers I, who had success in that car, yeah, and drivers that won races in there, and and that car seemed to fit the driving style of a couple of drivers. In my opinion, most most prominently Jimmy Johnson, because that's where he had his most success. Mm -hmm you could tell he was very proficient in that race car. What do you think the skill set will be that will get accentuated with this brand new car? Who, in your opinion, stands to excel? What are the traits of the driver that will excel with this race car that we're rolling out in 2013? Well, you know, I don't think we have the rules defined enough yet to really answer that question. I think um, there are some changes, some major changes with this car that it, it's, it's going to be different for drivers. But... Um, you know, I think we have to. There's some still unknown rules that that we're going to have to see where we end up with. I think one of the big changes that people aren't giving enough credit is the increased rear camber has changed the way this car drives. It, it's something that we've never had that much rear mechanical grip. So that is a fundamentally huge shift, and it'll be interesting to see what driver. Ex Excels. The problem, I think, Mike, the part that circles around that we haven't seen yet is we'll race six, eight, or ten weeks, and then Goodyear will develop a tire for those races. You know, it's we kind of get to get the product out there first, and then we'll get the new tires. And that way, I really believe the beginning of the year, while we want to win all the races we can, I don't think that'll tell the story of the season. I think there'll be a lot of unknowns, a lot of rotating rules, a lot of change. But I think when you hit Charlotte for the 600, from the 600 to the start of the chase, I think that is what you're going to see. That's going to be the true story of what this car is going to have. That will be the true testament of who's going to run well in the chase. So we think there's going to be a lot of change early, but we need to be prepared for the summer because we think that's kind of going to be the bread and butter of what we're going to have for, for years to come, really. And with that being said, the summer is going to be very important with this new race car. Does that accentuate what you do in the spring? And if you get behind in the spring, how it really early? does. How, how, how early do you start swinging for the fences, though, or do you do you resist the urge to do that? Because if you're behind the eight ball in April and, and, and May, all of a sudden you go into June and you're, you're, you're playing a big game of catch up there trying to get yourself in position to make sure you're in the top 10 or 12 when we hit Richmond. 
Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, if you go back and look and you see who's in what points position in May, it doesn't change a whole lot. We had a few guys, uh, the five got off to a bad start, the 24 had some bad luck, and they pushed their way into the chase. But but really, the top six, eight, ten, twelve cars, you know, the big chunk of the chase is determined early in the year. So, you know, the panic button, it's not put away in the closet. You know, it's it's you can see it. It's on the end of the desk. And, you know, there are NASCAR tests available. As an organization, you're going to get some testing this year. We're going to get four tests per organization. So it's going to be a real balance on confidence and, and, and how much you think you can learn in the next week and how far you think you are behind. And that's really the beauty and the strength of a company like Hendrick because we feel that you know the chance of one of our cars hitting it perfect is not real high. But the chance of all four of our cars hitting a chunk of it right and being able to put it together in a couple months, we feel very confident about that. And while it's not the most efficient way to do it, and I know it drives a lot of people crazy here, the way we run our four teams and, and the crew chiefs have so much say and we, we just go in different directions sometimes, we always seem to come back. We always kind of seem to rise, and that's because we believe in one another. We share all the information, even when we are on different branches of the tree. And uh, it seems like we try to get all our stuff together at the right time. We just hope, and you're absolutely right, timing is going to be important this year. You're going to have to hit the, your stride, you know, you, because whew, that chase doesn't seem like it's close, and then next thing you know, it's five weeks away, and you have points to make up, and, and we don't want to be in that position. How's your driver feeling? Is he ready to get back at it? Is Dale Jr. ready to get back behind the wheel of the race car, Steve? Oh, he's ready. He's absolutely ready. I actually spent some time with him this weekend. Me and him hung out, and uh, and he's ready. He's ready to go racing. He's ready to get on the racetrack. You know, it's a long ways to the Daytona races. So it's important to, to kind of take it step by step, stride by stride. But we're ready to get back on the racetrack and do some work. So uh, Daytona's going to be nice. We're really looking forward to Charlotte next week. That's going to be a huge test. That test really is going to determine what our rest of our winter looks like. I think Daytona, you know, kind of however you run there, there's not a real option to go back to another racetrack. You're going to have to work in the wind tunnel and off the racetrack. But at Charlotte, if you don't run well there, you don't feel like you have a very good package there. You know, you have Nashville available and other testing facilities available where if we have to, we can put cars on racetrack. Now, how much of this, take the driver out of the mix, I'm talking mainly about the crew guys, how important is it to start getting into a routine? Not necessarily of sleep, well, it could be sleep, it could be doing whatever, but as far as getting back at the racetrack, getting back into some sort of formal routine, number one, is there a formal routine? And number two, when will you start encouraging the guys to transition their way into it? Well, I mean, that's really the hardest thing. You know, Mike, any year you have some change. We have a little bit of change on the 88, a little bit of change on the 40. I think every team has a little bit of change, a guy here or there. And, you know, the, the struggle is we won't really hit our routine until Phoenix um, because even Daytona Speed Weeks is definitely not a routine. You know, the schedule is very uh, different. It's broken up. It's not like a regular. You know, our routine is guys are off Monday, work Tuesday, Wednesday, truck load Wednesday, travel Thursday, racetrack Friday. You know, we are very – uh, creatures of habit, and it's hard to get into a habit here in the off season. But you know what we try to do is we try to appreciate the hard work they put in year in and year out, and we try to have them get them as much of the weekends off as possible. Um, you know that's not all possible, but the winter is definitely busy. But we try to kind of get into a rhythm, get into a plan, and and follow up after we get home from Daytona, get down as a group. What did we do good? What did we not do good? Follow up after Charlotte. You know, always try to use these opportunities to learn to improve. And I think uh, you know the season's very long. Very, very, very long. So, you know, Pete said the bed. It's where is that panic button? And you want to run well enough early that you can leave it put away and, and not pull it out because I really believe you can be lined up better for the chase if you're in solid. If you have to race your way into the chase while you can run for the championship, man, it makes for a stressful summer. Was this off season completely different than previous ones, Steve, because of the new race car? Or did you guys try to keep a little bit more of an even keel like you had in the past the winters? Well, this has been a different one for me by a big chunk because we were on track in December in Charlotte, and that, that kind of spun me out. I'm, I'm not used to being on track in December, and while I loved it and I like to get to the racetrack and get to work, it, it kind of broke up the, the, the whole winter. And normally I stop and take a good like four or five day vacation with my family in December, and I didn't have that opportunity this year. And with that missing, it feels like the season has been really broken up, even the first week of the year. You know, last year being the first week of 2013, well, with New Year falling in the middle of the week, it was just – it's been broke up. That's why this week it feels really nice to be back and have a schedule and know that we're going to be here for, for a few days, and then we go to Daytona. But that's normal for us. You know, we getting on a race – Getting on an airplane, while that kind of breaks up other people's week, if you're on a race team and you're getting on an airplane, it feels like you're back home again. Well, 
soon it'll be time to get on the road. Daytona testing coming up this weekend. Preseason Thunder Daytona testing. It is open to the public. Lots of Q&A sessions and such. Check it out, DaytonaInternationalSpeedway.com. Stevie, thanks for the time. We'll talk to you next Monday. All right, guys. Thanks for having me on, and hopefully we'll have a good report from next Monday. Sounds hopefully good, Steve. So. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Uh, Steve Latart, Dale Jr.'s crew chief. Getting ready to...